on guys, Chris VA Travels. This weekend I find myself out in Lexington, Virginia, a small town in the Shenandoah Valley, and I'm going to visit the Jackson House, only home ever owned by Confederate General Stonewall Jackson. And you'll see just a middle class dwelling, and that porch has been added. It, originally the road ran up to right, right where that brick starts. And yeah, he lived here while he was a professor at VMI. He taught philosophy. To give you the background, the house was built in 1801. Jackson moved in in 1858, lived here for three years, when of course he left to fight the war. And just taking a look at the front facade, you'll see the imprint of the original windows. So these doors must not be original. And over here, we've got a placard on the ground. All right, I'm gonna go grab my ticket, take the house tour, and there's also a museum to check out. And they give you a brochure when you check in with a QR code uh, with a little information on each of the rooms and the garden out back. And Thomas was a pretty avid gardener, they say. He liked to spend a lot of time out here. And yeah, middle of December, a little cabbage back there. It's not looking at its best at the moment. And the stone attachment on the back of the house. We got some carrots over here. And a bunch of dormers up on the middle of that thing. That must have been the original portion. And back here, the carriage house. And looks like we've got a rocker carriage back here. A cider press over here. Yeah, I was like looking at the lamps on these things. Got the little step up right there. And these rocker carriages, they were pleasure carriages, I guess kind of the Cadillac of the time. Yeah, just some tools back here. They think Thomas had bought this. This is a replica, but in 1859, he had purchased it for his mother-in-law. Okay, first stop, the kitchen. And uh, iron stove back here. Looks like they've got that hearth plugged up. And cooking some bread, it looks like. And maybe some dessert right there. I see the iron back there, tea kettle. Got some smoked meat. Some canned goods back here. That pie looks pretty good. All right, so take a look at the slave quarters back here. And they think Amy, the cook, slept back here and you'll see her rope bed, it looks like. See a trundle bed down here. So I guess maybe a child slept back here. And yeah, it looks like somebody slept on a mat down there. And the male slaves, they think, lived at, in a building behind the house. Altogether, six slaves Stonewall Jackson owned. And here's a trunk of his, and I know they had some goods imported from their trips up north. Over here, you've got an extension table. This thing was pretty unique. You'll see down below some levelers. You would turn those knobs to balance out the table. And you've got your silver. This over, over here is original. And Stonewall was a very disciplined, punctual man. He would wake up at 6 a.m. every morning, go for a walk, say his morning prayers, take a cold bath, and then come in here for family prayer and breakfast. Over here, the good book, uh, open to the book of Corinthians. It's the last thing he and his wife had read before taking off for Richmond in April of 1861. And his silver with his initials chiseled on the handle there. We're now in the bedroom. And this bed used to be on the third floor in a guest room. 
It's stuffed with horse hair. You'll see there used to be a canopy on top. But you check out the turnings on these rails. Something unique over here, the stretcher, this arm, it spins. You wrap a quilt around it, and when you got cold at night, you pull it on top of yourself. More original items over here. Shaving stand, marble top. And yeah, once upon a time, Stonewall Jackson was clean shaven. And part of a set, you'll see the dresser over here. And these, uh, this set was actually owned by Stonewall and Eleanor, his first wife. All right, you'll see his US Army uniform on top of this Boston rocker. Of course, he fought in the Mexican-American War. Schiff Row tucked away back here. You'll see it filled with the linens and a potbelly stove. Yeah, you know this thing got plenty of use. It's pretty cold out here in the uh, Shenandoah Valley. Looks like the sword back there. Down here we've got the commode. Lift the top up, do your business. That thing's made of walnut and I'm sure it came in pretty handy. And some pretty neat items over here. These are original. These were used in the Mexican-American War. You'll see a straight razor, a brush, that mirror. Again, a clean-shaven stone wall. This photo is from 1857. It's called an ambrotype. You'll see a couple lockets of hair, Stonewall and his wife Mary, the darker hair of Stonewalls. And here we've got a calling cup holder. He acquired this while he was in Paris, France. Take a look in the linen closet and check out the dumbbells. Yeah, he used to exercise. He was a little ahead of his time. Some lavender right there to make everything smell good. Some oils and ointments back there. And this trunk, pretty nice. It's not original, but it's similar to one he would have had. Pretty nice inlay. And he probably used a trunk similar to this on his big European tour he took back in 1856. Tobacco twist over here, uh, similar to a mothball, just to keep the bugs out of the sheets and, and quilts. And there's his tub. Yeah, he took a cold bath every morning. He believed in hydrotherapy. And uh, yeah, just a period coat. Browse through the parlor, the nicest room in the house, and check out this stove. Yeah, look at the detail on that. Yeah, pretty nice. And over here, the piano, this is uh, similar to a piano they had purchased up in New York. And his wife, Anna, was an avid player. Check out this chair and interesting story. Yeah, Stonewall was a little bit of an odd duck. Uh, he apparently, he had kind of a learning disability and he would sit in his chair each evening, stare at the wall while he prepared his lessons for the next day. Uh, again, he was a professor of philosophy over at VMI. And the center table over here is original. Uh, check out the marble top and yeah pretty nice uh, and back here you've got a settee it matches the chair to the left and kind of a pull-out table back here I don't know if that's mahogany but yeah a gentleman's chair right here uh, you can tell by the upholstered arms and a little display back here I see a parlor dome so they're calling it a bell jar I've always known it to be called a parlor dome. And then a snuff box owned by his brother-in-law. Behind it, a needlework box. And up here, another one of these Ambro types. And that's his sister, Laura, and her son named Stark. Uh, below is another nephew. That would be Thomas. Uh, dog paperweight. And then you've got the Bible down here. more items over here and here's a portable cloth filing cabinet where he kept his letters when he traveled and check out this stamp looks like he's got a letter seal classroom key over at VMI and an inkwell he picked up when he was overseas over in England back here we've got his tall boy standing desk and like I say, he was kind of ahead of his time. He liked to stand while he worked. A 
over here a really old map of Rockbridge County. Yeah, things got some age to it. Down here you'll see to the left a spittoon. And check out this upholstered kind of regal looking chair. It looks like that would be another gentleman's chair. And yeah, you'll see a little tear on the side there. And up on the wall is a copy of his diploma. The frame is original. Uh, the original diploma is in storage. made it into the museum and some pretty neat items back here. A few souvenirs he brought back from his time in Mexico City during the war. You've got a beaded bag, a spur, a teapot, and tea caddy. And down here you've got the first known picture of Stonewall Jackson. It's from his graduation in 1846 and this is a tin type that was created in 1855. And over here we've got his sister's quilt going back to 1844. This thing's in pretty good shape for being 180 years old. And we've got a purse and a tea caddy that was sewn by his first wife, Ellie. She made them for her sister on the right, Margaret. And Ellie had actually lost two fingers when she was five years old. She thought she would never be able to sew again, but it ended up being a really good seamstress. And there's a silver calling card case that was Margaret's. Pretty interesting, this is an astrology book from Jackson's physics class, circa 1856. And it looks like something you could still use today. And over here, you'll see Jackson's autograph, top left corner. And this is a ledger book from the Oakland house. It's where he and his first wife, Ellie, had stayed on their way to visit Jackson's sister. And then down here, this book is pretty interesting. It's called The African Preacher. And it's about a black reverend named Willie White and talks about his rise from slavery to freedom. And lastly, down at the bottom, you've got a ledger book from the Bank of Rockbridge. Yeah, up here, a little information on these six slaves that he owned. Uh, unfortunately, not too much information. And you'll see in 1860, Lexington was about one third black. And yeah, you've kind of got that awkward statement where he treated his slaves good, although you can never really say he treated somebody good if they're a slave, but he was popular in the African-American community. Uh, he really pushed for their education so they could learn scripture. And he started the colored Sabbath school in 1855. 80 to 100 students worship there. And here is Hetty right here, his childhood nurse. And this is her photo from 1904. And a cook named Amy. And over here is a cookbook with uh, some of Amy's recipes, her recipe for buckwheat cakes. And this is a Anna's journal. And some key tags over here from the Rock, Rock Bridge, Alum Springs. Just a Bible. Over here, a model of the packet boat Marshall at the Lexington Landing on the Maury River, 1867. See a little picture back there and a couple of items, a bell or rope off of the boat. And over here, part of the telegraph that was cut so the Union Army couldn't relay that Stonewall Jackson had been injured at Chancellorsville and a scalpel that was used to cut off his arm that evening of May 2nd into the morning of May 3rd, his arm was amputated. And just talking about how May 11th, his body was taken to Richmond to lay in state. All right, that's it for the Jackson house. And uh, unfortunately I've been rained out and I was gonna visit Oak Hill Cemetery where he's buried. 
and I don't mind a little rain, but it's coming down pretty good and it's about 48 degrees out there. So yeah, I'm not trying to catch my death, <laughs> but I stopped by the visitor center and uh, yeah, I found this walking tour and yeah, a lot to see out here. I'm, I'm definitely going to be coming back. And uh, yeah, there's a VMI museum. There's University Chapel where Robert E. Lee is buried. And uh, of course the uh, Oak Hill Cemetery. So hopefully you'll be seeing some of that in the future. Yeah, guys, as always, like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon. See ya.